Hi, I'm Bowling Otter. And I'm Lissy Sandwich. And welcome to... The BS on the Internet. Well, it's been another one of those weeks. Oh my God. Guess what Has tomorrow is? Has it been another one of those weeks? Yes. Tomorrow's my birthday. It's his birthday tomorrow. But not today. If you watch this no, on Sunday, it's not today. This is going up on Sunday. Maddie's yes. birthday is the 20th, yeah. which is Monday. So this will, this will be my birthday BSOI anyway. And we're going to Is it BSOI or is it BSOI? Well, B-Soy. 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 We've been B-Soy. calling it B-S-O-Y around the house. We have. But now I kind of like B-Soy. What's B-Soy? up, B-Soy? What's up, B-Soy? B-Soy? <laughs> but <laughs> tomorrow, we're going to be live streaming on Monday night at our usual time. Yes. And I don't know what you're going to play, but, you know, we have fun on the birthday streams. I love yeah. them. Like, I know it sounds Something like Something I can really interact weird. with you guys. I don't want to play with you guys. So I know. That's what we're going to be doing on Monday. Something like that. It, it sounds really weird. Like, part of me feels like, oh, maybe, you, you know, you should have a night, night off on your birthday. But it's so fun. Yeah. I mean, streaming I, is so I really fun. enjoy streaming. So that yes. is kind of like a night off. It kind you know? of is. Yeah. It's so much fun. And I love hanging out with you guys and talking to you guys. And I know you do, too. So this will be Indeed. awesome. Especially after we will have just played South Park. That's going to be on Saturday night. Yes. And after my horrible layers of fear if you were at that stream that was I'm so stream, sorry guys. oh my god i'm scarred marathon it was like we'll over four hours it. of layers of fear lissy playing I it's crazy and then i had a dream about it we'll talk a lot about of it clips later. we'll talk about it a little too many <laughs> clips <laughs> but we have a lot to talk about that's yes. a real i think this may be the first one the first beast week in a while where we did not have a trailer <laughs> we're going to be like doing a, a lot of like topics yes that There's i'm a really bunch of stuff to talk about this week yeah i'm, I'm really curious like to get some yeah. of your thoughts because i believe we're going to be doing uh some talking about some of these things yeah. that are kind of you know up in the air because some of these things i don't have my mind made up on so i kind of some of them happened like right after we recorded last Week. Yeah, dude. So sure. we've been waiting for Stuart and a couple of these for like a week yeah, to yeah. talk about them. Right, right, right. So let's get started. Let's get started. Be right. sweet. Okay, to kick things off, unless you've been living under a rock. Yeah, yeah. You know uh, about Ninja. You know, he's a very popular streamer, Twitch streamer, the most popular Twitch streamer. Right. And he plays Fortnite all the time. And he plays Fortnite with a lot of famous people. It plays, uh, there's always people showing up with his duos like chance of rapper randomly happened yeah like drake last week. was a while ago drake was the one that he set a record for people watching yeah, concurrent viewers so yeah um and he does this stuff all the time now um he's always playing with different people however in a polygon uh interview he had said that he's not he doesn't stream uh with women yeah uh and i uh, and it was and he was specific about that careful about that to say that it was because um of the controversy that would just be guaranteed to happen um, he, he said he would stream with them and they would have like a funny joke that they would share and they would laugh and then everybody would clip it, put it up on YouTube. Flirting! Childs that they're flirting and like, what's gonna happen with Jay oh. Ghosty, his wife? And like, is yeah. she mad about it? And all this stuff and it would just go crazy. And yeah. and he's not wrong because mm-hmm. you go right now, they'll, they'll, they'll have clips of him talking about anything you can think of yeah other streamers there's stuff that he's friends with and they'll like they'll create these like conflicts yeah there's these drama channels oh, on God. youtube that there's also really fortnite drama awful. channels now yeah like yeah. just about fortnite drama yeah. basically it's really really odd and i don't know if they've always been around or i've just been noticing them maybe in the last couple years mm-hmm. where it's just their content is only like manufacturing drama or yeah. trying to fit like a narrative so i i get it i yeah. get it but well finish what you were saying finish what you were saying <laughs> yeah i mean and there was uh, uh there i remember when myth played with pokimane okay and immediately videos up yeah is myth dating pokimane now is this yeah. that and the other thing like instantly right. and they're not as mm-hmm. far as i know right um you but you can't he, have a professional relationship yeah you can you but the, there's a lot a lot of criticism coming at him for this right, um right. It's funny because in the interview, he's saying, like, nobody's ever given me crap for it because they just get it what I'm saying and, like, yeah. they're no other streamers. So he, he went in there thinking, like, yeah, it's always been cool. I just don't do it for that. I, uh, he, he says it's to protect his wife. And they've been together, him and his wife have been together for years, but yeah. they've just been married a year. Yeah, they just had their first one year anniversary yeah. of marriage, but they, I think they've been dating for like five or six years or something okay. like that. So, so they're solid. They're solid. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, and, like, they work together. She's his manager. Mm-hmm. Um, and she also streams, too. She's been streaming for years herself. So oh, cool. she's somewhat of a public figure anyway mm-hmm. so uh anyway there's just been a ton of crit- ton of criticism yeah ton of backlash because they're calling him sexist for uh, yeah. for doing it and uh some people are saying that um he has the kind of platform that he should use to try to change that landscape mm-hmm. um and like boy has it been a contentious topic over the it past it really week. has there's it been really a lot has. of opinions flying and and it's the kind of thing where i see them like these opinions on either side i'm like yeah i get that 
Right. Yeah, I get that. And yeah. I just, and I always keep That's, wondering about where I'm falling on this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I keep winding up on both sides of this because at first I was thinking, okay, I understand that he wants to protect his relationship. I, I really do get that because I'm sure he gets like all kinds of DMs and pictures. It's it, it's a shame that it's almost like a rite of passage for somebody to say, I, I forget if it was him or somebody where they're contacting her, his wife and saying, hey, your Philly husband D. sent me. Philly, Philly D. D was talking about this and he That's was saying right. that he had some empathy for his situation because he had a few different female guests on that he was interviewing. Yeah. And uh, and all these rumors started flying. And it wasn't just stuff going up on YouTube and people sending him messages or saying stuff on Twitter. Right. They were contacting his wife. Right. And saying terrible stuff to his wife. Like your husband's messing around. Yeah. Or and yeah. stuff like that. So that's kind of where it's like he was. Dude. That's where he was kind of like, I get it, man. Like yeah. you're trying to protect her. It will always be there. Yeah. Yeah. It will always be there. Yeah. And that happens, you know, even in like the music industry and yeah. in the movie industry. And it's interesting that it's leaked its way out here. But yeah. I, at first, I kind of went like, oh, you know, he's trying to protect his wife. But after I've been sitting on it for a couple of days, I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking, could he persevere through this? Since now, since he made this statement and everybody is on a heightened alert about it, can he use this hurdle? as a, like a stepping stone, can he jump over it to go play with women? So that way, if any, say the inevitable rumors do come out, this way the community could say, oh, nope, they're just friends. This is what we, this is what he was talking about. And you know, and maybe the community itself will squash it. But to tell you the truth, the people who matter know that it's yeah. okay. But for his wife, that's gotta be really Harassment scary. is, even if it's like, even if the people that like matter and the people you know, like yeah. are they're confident about it, whatever they get it, just to be harassed like mm -hmm. that, especially whether it's founded or unfounded, especially yeah. at the at the volume that yeah. she would be harassed. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, we're talking. <laughs> this is the most popular streamer in the world. Yeah. OK. And she's a public figure right alongside him mm -hmm. and on her own. Yeah. So it's like, man, I, I don't know. Like we there's. Not a lot of precedent for the volume of harassment she would then get. Right, right. So it's, I can imagine he he sees himself as seeing that. Right. Catching that before it happens mm -hmm. and be like, you know, I'm just not even going to bother. And I think what may be happening, this is another thing Philly D said, which I agreed with, mm -hmm. is that if PR wise, he's lose lose here completely. Oh, completely. You know, he's, he's not going to, yeah. he's going to lose on Can't either win. side of the argument. There's people going to hate him for it either way. So he is choosing to lose in the way that protects his wife. I know. You know, protects his family. Yeah. So, I, you know, I mean, no, regardless of where I end up on my opinion of it, I, I'm not, I'm definitely I, I'm not going to give a crap for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm arguing know? in circles. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely not going, first off, it's know. not a sexist thing to say what he's saying. No, I don't think that I don't all. think it's sexist. No, he's doing this out I of protection think... of family. He's just seeing, he's just stating exactly what would happen. Yeah, well, I, you know? I see I see the headline of Ninja doesn't play with women. Mm -hmm. Ninja won't play with women. That is and missing all the nuance sexist, in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, and that's where the sexist thing is coming yes, from. Yes, yes. And all of that, but a lot and of And the headlines are written think, with that in mind. It's, yeah. it's sensational. And there's a lot of people who say, like, you know, you got into this, you know, you should expect it, yeah. you got to deal with it, you know, it's part but of the But he is, this is his way of doing that, though. That's true. You know? That's true. Yeah, I don't... I, this is his way of dealing with it. I don't know. Where, where do you guys sit on this. It's a tough I'm one. Curious. It's a really it tough one. Tough, yeah. There's no real right answer here, guys. No, so I, no. I, I would disagree with anybody saying that mm -hmm. personally, that there's yeah. like a right way to approach this. I'd be curious. I think there are just multiple ways to approach it, and he's picked one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'd, I'd be curious to see if any of you are firm in your decision or your opinion on mm -hmm. it. Or because I feel like the majority of people are going around like we are, just kind of going, well, you yeah. know, like I could see, see both sides of it. Yeah, yeah. I can. So, yeah, where at the end of the day, I, I guess my, my, my opinion on it is at the end of the day, no matter what we think about the greater good and society as a whole, it is a personal decision of, of his. Of course, of course. He's yeah. not, he's not like in charge of anybody but yeah. himself and his family, you know, like and with his family. Yeah. So, like, he's just making a personal decision. I wonder decision. if it has anything to do with the visibility of his wife. Because if she is, I mean, she's successful Probably in her own right, it. of course, yep. right. But if she were brought more to the forefront 
would that happen? I'm thinking of like Ethan and Ela. Mm -hmm. People, from what I understand, don't really bother Ethan and Ela. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't get a wedge in there because they know they're solid. People don't really bother us. Granted, we're not humongous, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I've never been bothered. I've never been hit up by anybody saying, you know, Maddie's cheating on you or whatever. Nothing like that. Yeah. But it, I'm wondering if, if she is elevated a little bit to be more... Um, well, on the same thing. Well, they already are. First off, you can't just elevate her. Yeah, that's, that's true. Just, it that's doesn't true. work like yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah. like, and also or the fact that, more, like, or, yeah, yeah, every red carpet picture, they're both in that's there true. every time. He that's takes her true. everywhere. They're together constantly. You're he's right. He's tweeting about her constantly. Right. She shows up in his streams a lot. Yeah, that's true. Like, she's right there. She's yeah. his manager. Yeah. She's right. She's right there. She's actually. So she's actually the company and public facing mm -hmm. ninja too. Right, so right. she's right a part of the whole thing. She's a part of the unit. And also when you compare comparing it to like us or like Ethan or something yeah. like that. I think like Jenna and Julian. We don't the see people Ethan. people who don't get bothered. We yeah. don't see Ethan playing with uh, or like hanging uh, out and doing things with other women. And if we did, maybe there would be stuff. I'll bet if Ethan showed up in a video by himself ha going out on the town and hanging out with this uh, with another female, whoever, mm -hmm. um, and they're having a good time and joking and look like they're getting along. Yeah. There would be videos going up. Yeah. I think there would be rumor mills going and people would be like, is Ela jealous? Mm -hmm. If nothing else, yeah, is yeah. Ela jealous? Yeah. People would reach out for that much. Hmm. I think just people are waiting for the opportunity to do that kind of thing. Maybe. And I think they would what do it. Although it was funny. There was a tw I saw somebody tweet, uh, retweeted when he was addressing this, right? Yeah. And uh, it said, you've, you've, uh, you've, um, you've played with famous people and all the rappers before. Would you play with Nicki Minaj, she asked. Mm. And he just responded with the Jordan Peele sweating face. Oh, really? <laughs> I thought that was kind of the perfect yeah. reply. Yeah. But it's the kind of thing where it's like, uh, if it was like some crazy celebrity doing it for a PR piece, maybe he would do it because maybe. then it would be kind of transparent that like this is a PR piece. Mm -hmm. But who knows? I don't know. I'm I hoping that know. what I don't think know. I liked where you were going with what you're saying that maybe now that this is out, maybe yeah. now that people everybody knows get the it, story. we've talked about it ad nauseum. Maybe yeah. if he was to do it now, yeah. people would be like, all right, like, Leave we get it. You're just doing this because it's somebody right. to play with. And, and like, it is possible it isn't to have a personal, like, a friendly... relationship. It's not an affront to your relationship. Yeah, it, yeah, it's very possible to have a friendly, professional relationship with somebody of the opposite sex. 100%. It happens. And I, I don't know. think he's arguing against and that. Everybody, he just knows yeah, what's going to happen. And, and just everybody's on edge right now. Every Everybody is just like, uh, you know, just in all aspects of everything. The I social media. Like everybody, yes. That's all it is. And I feel like you know? everybody's like, ooh, you know. The, the outrage culture. So it's the reason like, they're calling it that because it is an outrage culture. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't take much and people are anxious to blow things up. And that's, that's, true. that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. So, but it is, it is, you know, I, I get it. I think that he, I think he's absolutely right that that's what would happen. Mm -hmm. But I also think he's invited himself into this incredible wave of criticism yeah. by taking that stance. What would you do if you were him? I'm not trying to bait you into some kind of relationship. If like, I was him. <laughs> like yeah. thing. I'm really not. I'm curious to see how you would handle this. If I was him, I would have just played with other popular streamers, whether they were men or yeah. women. I, I just would have yeah. played and I just would have said, like, I would have expected the rumors Same. and I would have said, like, whatever, guys. Mm -hmm. It's not like that anyway is, and is moved on. I, I would have. I could say that it's easy to me sitting here now with, like, 75,000 subscribers. Right, right, right. You know, right, that, right, like, that. I would do that. But that's right. what I imagine I would do. Sure. I would just try to ignore it and I would just do whatever the hell but I wanted. But does that also say something about about her that she is somebody that needs to be protected. Well, we do like, not know maybe that. She Let's the, I don't think uh, I don't think I want to speculate you know? about that at no, all. No, no, no. But is that a message that he could be sending as well? Like she can't handle herself. I don't think by so. By not all. No. playing. I, I, you know? I, I I'm think wondering that's... I'm playing devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I'm wondering if that argument could be made. Yeah, I just think, I just think that's a huge that character indictment. Yeah. I'm afraid to make. Right. Yeah, oh, of and course. And I, I don't yeah. think we have any of that. I think I think he might just actually. I do watch Ninja a decent amount of time mm -hmm. to hear him chatter about stuff, and he gets super emotional about stuff, and he has an ego, but he's that's super he, entertaining. Yeah, okay. but he, how could he not? Sure. Honestly, I mean, with how <laughs> this guy at this point. Yeah, but, yeah. But um, he's a. Uh, it's but he's an entertaining dude. He seems like a, a you know a stand up guy. And when you're streaming that much. Oh. It's hard not to let your actual self oh, in there. Of course. So yeah. you don't have full control over, like, here's what I want you to see. Yeah, yeah. So you get it. And, like, having digested a lot of that, I feel like he's, like, a genuinely thoughtful guy mm -hmm. who's big on family mm. and big on his relationship with his wife. Yeah. And I, I feel like 
I, you know, what I would speculate is that he's made this decision on his own mm. to shield her from what he thinks would be a terrible yeah. social media experience. Yeah. Not saying that she couldn't handle it. Yeah. Not saying that she's asked for it. Yeah. He just feels like it's just better right. off yeah. with her not wearing yeah. it. It's, it's very, it, it's chivalrous. I understand. I, but it's, yeah. I get it. I think yeah, he's, he's doing he's the chivalrous, chivalrous thing. Chivalrous. I think yeah. he's being chivalrous. I get it. Just, wow. If this, like, right now, that has... That has drawbacks. Yeah, yeah. You know? All right. Moving on. All right. Next uh, is what I really wish we knew about before we recorded last oh week. Oh, my God. It had just happened. It had just it, when we, we, like we stopped recording and I was reading. I'm like, what yeah. the hell is this crap? I know. I know. So oh there's God. this dude, Philip, I think it's Muchin. Oh, yeah. M-I-U-C-I-N. I'm assuming it's Muchin, right? Right. Philip Muchin. Muchin. Muchin? Okay. That's what I'm going with. All I right, apologize if that's wrong. Uh, he, he was uh, a game reviewer for IGN. Um, yeah. What happened was he uh, he recorded a, uh, a review for he wrote and recorded a video review for Dead Cells, mm -hmm. freaking awesome game by the way. Oh my gosh! So um, and uh, so and funny. Uh, a, another YouTuber who uh, you know relatively small. I think he had about five thousand subscribers or something like that. Or no, no, no. I'm sorry. It was it was like more like fifteen thousand. I think at the time. At the time. Now he has more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a subscribers. He had done a video review of Dead Cells <clears throat> a week prior, mm -hmm. and he put up a video being like, "Huh, isn't this kind of peculiar?" He said, "What do I do?" Yeah. He pointed out blatant plagiarism. I mean, it was pretty obvious. Oh, it was. It was it, it was bad. definitely plagiarism. Like There's some stuff lifted line. wholesale, yeah. and even stuff that was like had the high school style BS changing words here and there. Yeah, yeah. Each point was the hit in the exact same order. Yeah, like the the it flowed the same way. It was it, like the last points were made at the same point, like the same second of the of the video. Right. I mean, it was it was pretty. Blatant. But yeah, they lined up at some point. They lined yeah. up. It was blatant. And he put up a video like, "What do I do about this?" Yeah. What and now? he didn't have to do anything because it went viral. It went to Reddit, top of Reddit. Yep. Um, IGN heard about it right away, mm -hmm. uh, and within I to their credit. Within 24 hours, they had an internal investigation into the uh, review, decided it was plagiarism, and fired him. Right. All at once. They just like, oh, never mind. Cut this guy right the heck out. We can't trust him anymore. Right. You can't have a reviewer you can't trust. And then. And then. And then. So he goes. Oh, my God. He goes. He gets better. The whole week. I was yeah. like, ah. So he yeah. goes and uh, he makes a video. Um. Uh, like responding to the plagiarism uh, accusations, well, wait, allegations. Yes. Allegations. Before before you go on, I thought this was a case originally of somebody who was overworked, maybe had like a deadline that was doesn't creeping matter. up on him. Doesn't I know matter. it doesn't matter, but I I like I originally and I have felt done kind this. of bad. I I've, I have reviewed games. Yeah, yeah. Pretty heavily for a while, so I get that. I know, but I could see the temptation to do it if you're like under a deadline and you've got a lot going on. I'm thinking, oh, maybe this is somebody who was overworked and got caught. He should lose his job or go yep. on some kind of probation or something like that. But. But, so he makes this video responding to the, you call them allegations, right? Um, and he he never actually admitted to plagiarizing. No. He didn't, um, he never apologized to the guy who wrote the freaking review. Yeah. He apologized to like the readers and IGN and everything like that. And then he said like, you know, to the person, uh, to, to Boomstick Gaming, as it was, to Boomstick Gaming, I just think you should just keep, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing a great job. Uh, you get a lot more audience right now. It's like. Why would I take advice from you, dude? Like, he's doing better than you are. You used his review. I know. But anyway, in that, <laughs> he also addressed accusations of more plagiarism. Uh, there was a, a FIFA game mm -hmm. that he was accused of plagiarizing as well. And he went like, and he brought that up in the video mm -hmm. and talked about how it was ridiculous. And he and he, and he's claimed that because Kotaku was, has been breaking this like crazy. Yeah. And um, and uh, Kotaku, he, he challenged them. He said, like, you know, just keep digging. You're not going to find anything. And holy freaking crap, oh did they God. find more stuff? Oh, my God. I mean, just with dozens more <laughs> situations of plagiarism. I mean, instances of plagiarism. Yeah. All the way down to his freaking what resume he had on, um, on, LinkedIn. on LinkedIn. He had copy and pasted from a Wikipedia page just lifted it and plopped it i mean word for freaking word and and it was just, and it was like it, it seems like it was just i know and and i mean I he got he got it. fired <laughs> yeah i know he got fired yeah. and now i know like the the higher ups at ign are really like they're in yeah, Dan Stapleton, so the, the reviews editor, who I like because he's a PC yeah. gamer. I was a PC gamer fan for a long time. Oh, of course. I was yeah. really happy when he went to IGN. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, great, because they were having some. Mm -hmm. He was a little, was, had not had the best reputation for reviews for a while there. Right. I really think he made a big difference. Mm -hmm. And man, like just watching his Twitter after this happened, it's like that dude must be. <laughs> yeah. Because I know people were like, IGN should have caught this. I'm like, come on. Internet's way too big. Mm -hmm. You can't. Every, people who review big, games. Yeah. 
it's always a labor of love, right? Yeah, that's true. So you never expect anyone to plagiarize. That's true. You just never now expect you do. it. You just I never expect, now you have to be so much more careful. But even if you try to go and be like, I'm going to find every review anyone's ever done, every video, watch yep. every video, and see if this matches anything, mm -hmm. they're gonna, you're going to drive yourself nuts because there's going to be common themes. There's going to be some phrasing that's going to be similar. But not yep. outright plagiarism like this guy is clearly very, very guilty of yeah. on multiple instances. Right. This guy's nuts. I know, I know. I just, just, just don't do it. Oh, Because I... It's not even once, good. Once plagiarism. it says dozens more came out, I was like, oh, because I really was thinking that this was somebody who was stressed and under a deadline. That's where my brain goes when I see that somebody has plagiarized. Like, this is somebody who's overworked. Or, you know, or they could be lazy. Who knows? Maybe it's lazy. Or, and he just, you know, doesn't want to do the work or whatever. But, uh, oh God, I was accused once in, I co in college and yeah. I hadn't done it. And it was, oh my God, it was such a mess. I'll tell you the story sometime. <laughs> but yeah, and it was, it was devastating to be accused and not, um, and I hadn't plagiarized. Yeah. And it was like this, this thing and I had to go to like the department chair. Yeah, like they didn't even tell you what you plagiarized. It's no, just assumed that you couldn't have written what it was. Yeah. That's they, a slap that's what in it the was. face. Yeah. It was, a, they circled a paragraph and they that's said, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. And she said, your words, question mark, see me. Yeah. What is that? I know. Crap? And I was oh, like, I would have been so bad. I know. And, but. But I was, you know me, I was like, what did I do? So I went in like all nervous, yeah. you know, like I had done something wrong and they were like, you know, like, what do you mean? And I was like explaining where I was coming from. I had to like pull out all my files and all my notes and show where oh I was looking, like my so research. Ridiculous. And yeah, it was crazy. So it's a scary thing to be accused. I get that. And I understand his, you know, his knee jerk reaction to kind of defend himself. But I'm curious to see it's not the same where kind of he reaction, winds though. up. No. Because you well, had a knee jerk reaction to someone caught. who hadn't plagiarized. Right, right, right. He is a knee jerk reaction to somebody who got caught. Yeah. And he's you know? just denial, denial, denial. Yeah. I want to see what happens to this guy. I, I think I want to check up on him in like a month and see what he's doing. He's got to be doing something else, right? You got to get another job. I guess maybe he'll do his own YouTube channel and that's it. Maybe he thinks he, that's what he could do because obviously he thinks he's fine. You know, I guess. Look at the smug look on his face. Look, <laughs> wah, wah. look he's got prison stripes. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> he's got prison stripes. He's like, he's like, look I at He's got him. orange in his chair. He knows yeah, the jump yeah. is coming. Oh my gosh. I know. And he's like, look, I'm in my house. You don't even know. Look, I'm a prisoner, but I'm in my own house because I get away with things. I know. Well, he didn't this time, but yikes. Okay, it's time for the subreddit of the week. And uh, this week is. Ow. <laughs> what just happened? Did you punch the microphone? I did. And you know what? I scraped my knuckle earlier in the week and I hit the area of my knuckle that I scraped. So that's why it hurt. Like I hit, I hit my boo-boo. That's a bummer. You okay? Yeah. You me get to make it better? Yeah. Retrofuturism is the subreddit of the week. Thank you. That made me feel better. Good. Okay. So retrofuturism <laughs> is, did you ever see, I thought this was so cool. Like old print ads, oh, this is really nerdy. <laughs> now I'm gonna explain it. Uh, from like the 50s and 60s on what they thought the future was gonna look like, or the 80s, and they'll say, oh, what was, what's the year 2000 gonna look like? You know, they say in 1985, and they're like, there's gonna be flying cars, and things like that. So I think this kind of stuff is really cool. So I'm at the top of last month. So like, what is this? 1955 Ford, Ford Beatnik bubble. Look at that. That's cool. The hell? Look at the steering wheel. What's with the steer? Oh, steering wheel's got like the Batman steering wheel going on. Look at that. Where's the wheels? Yeah, the, that's that's the like ultimate there is a car terminal like factor of this car. Like you couldn't drive that on any non-completely flat road. What's with this with this wean it? What's that supposed what to be? What is that wean it? What is that? How do you It's like a Jetsons car though. How do you like change gears? Like uh, I don't know. I don't know. Moving on. Let's see what else we have here. <laughs> I know, I like this stuff. A 1969 plan to build a second nuke-proof Manhattan below New York City. Whoa! An underground Manhattan? Oh my God, really? Through two, what looks like yeah. <laughs> tubes, the entire- That is the only traffic management you would need. It's like the Lincoln Tunnel, the Holland Tunnel, that's it. How the heck would that work? <laughs> and then they have like a sky here, or yeah. like a top of the bubble. Look, they have Coca-Cola. Yeah, well, that's, that, where, that's, that's where you get your soda. Yeah. Everybody right there. So I guess this is where everybody lives. Nuke-proof Manhattan, where all the rich people are. Oh, my you, gosh. You can't, uh, you can't expand it. No. You can't get in or get out. How do you get enough oxygen in there? I have a lot of So questions. when it starts to fall apart, there's no exit plan. That's what I see. And Manhattan looks oddly small. 
Like where where is where's everything else? Yeah, you're right. Where is... <laughs> New York is huge. New York's big. Like when it's, it's really big. It's humongous. And not only that, like it's like there's then there's everybody else, and there's Brooklyn, there's Bronx, there's Queens, there's so much. It's like yeah, it's you know, huge. it's really really humongous. Future city. What is this? Oh That's my what God. this is going to look like. They're all wearing Segway bubbles. Hey, oh, I w- that's the cars. Se- Segway bubbles. That's what it kind of looks like, right? They're all Segways. <laughs> Segway bubbles. No, but they're driving them. Look. Yeah, you drive Segways. That's fun. Oh, look at this this posh lady. She's driving too. Look, she's got a she's got a fancy. So what they're saying is that there's going to be they're going to have there's one company that's going to have a monopoly on Ripley's cars because they're all the same model. I suppose. Ripley's Museum is still popular. Apparently. Oh my gosh. I like it, but I think this kind of stuff is really interesting. It is. City Center 2050. City Center 2050. See? So 2050. So 40 years, is this going to, is it going to look like this? No. Oh my God, this know. looks so similar to something I had when I was little. And it's really? Like, it's like ringing the weirdest bell right now. Oh. I think I had something like this that I was like coloring. Like it was no color. <laughs> like, really? Like color pencils. So I'm, I'm talking like three years old, like four years really? old. Really? This like, this like bringing something back. Oh. It's kind of wild. It reminds I, me I of like the exactly. fifth element, like uh, universe, you know, when everybody was in the cars and like the yeah. automatic little things. That's really cool. Town under a bubble. Wow. wow. Bubble town. See, I don't know if any of this would ever really work. You know, no, it certainly wouldn't. 1956 I mean, ad from New Departure showing the vision of future for supermarkets in 1959. Drive-in market. Well, we have drive like drive up, like we could do curbside ordering. But they, yes. they could deliver to your house. Mm-hmm. There's some, oh my gosh, when we, oh my gosh, yeah, when I had the baby, we we did a uh, delivery, like grocery delivery, and it was awesome. Yeah. Do you remember that? That was really, really yeah. cool. It helped out a lot. Yeah, but how would this work? So you would just like drive through the whole supermarket, like in your own car, and like reach out of your window. And it's interesting, like looking at like, this too, because like, well, it looks like I think you would order. You would drive up and order. Somebody would bring it to you. Okay. Um, so oh, you're just, yeah, you're just yeah, hanging look. out there. Okay. Um, well, the wires wouldn't work. Oh, here we go. Choose items from the monitor screen. Electro- electronic impulses. Select, assemble, deliver your order. Oh, so like you would have like a drone system. Oh, some okay. Kind of just claw like system yeah. That goes this assembly in. line. Okay. okay. And then you would come out of this on this conveyor belt. Yeah. And then somebody would help come out and load your car. I see. Okay. okay. I, that's an interesting idea. I, it's funny to me now, seeing as how it's actually going. Right. When we look at uh, who was it that was um. Was it Amazon? Amazon Let's go do supermarkets. We just walk in and walk out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I think really we what's talked that. about it in one of these one time. Yeah, we did. So yeah, that seems yeah. to be where it actually might be going. We'll find out. Oh. You know, but it, you know, the good old cashier at the end of the store oh. lived now, for a long time. I know, because now we're dealing with unexpected item in bagging area. Yeah. Please wait for attendant. <laughs> unexpected item, and I'm like, yeah. there's nothing there. Yeah, definitely not there yet. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> so stressful. Lost city of Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> What is this 1980s Audi concept car? Hey. Looks like a DeLorean kind of. Actually, you know what it looks like? It looks like it like an Insight or a Prius. Yeah, that actually kind of it's right? not that far off except no. they're a little, you know, they're a little little higher. Yeah. I think the uh the cuz it looks like a hatchback, like yeah. what has become hatchbacks now. That would be interesting if that's where like it came up like this. That may be the engine. If, the if that's oh, cuz I know there were some sports maybe. cars the engines was in the back in the like butt. that. Yeah. Interesting. Oh. Sphinx. I like that it's called the Sphinx. Oh my god. I'm moving on. <laughs> What's the Alfa Romeo Yeah, Navajo? I was going to look at that. Oh, looks like a DeLorean. How do you get in? Here's the handle. Yeah. So it probably goes. Psh, yeah. Psh. And steam comes out. Psh. Look at a yeah. Look at this. This swooped windshield. You probably can't even sit forward. You'd be like, boom. Yeah, you probably sit really low. Boom. How do you get in the back seat? Kind of. Is there a back seat? Climb your way back there. I don't know no. if there's a back seat. No, there's not. Astronome described time and space car at the New York Auto Show. Concept car. Celestial time zone clock permitting actual flight type navigation in 1956. What the heck? They put the lady in it, and all the men are around like, Hey, see? Look, that's our car there. Yeah, it's actually child. not... Oh, there's one other female in that entire photo. Where? On the right. Hey, there she is! <laughs> Maddie Founder. I like Look this. at that kid's hair all the way to the right. This one? That dude is, like, set to go. That guy is, like... It's 1956. There's no hair out of place there, he's, man. He's ready to be Bapalula. 
<laughs> look at this guy with his with his with his pipe. Huh. Oh my gosh, I love this stuff. Every look at all the hats. Everyone's got his hats on. It's amazing. I like this thing. <laughs> yeah, what is that? <laughs> that's kind of that's how you can talk to the aliens. That's right. That's right. Like, that's you your celestial like, navigator. Here I come. Yeah, that's in flight. Like what do you call it? And she's just there to sit and look pretty. I guess. I guess. All right. Hey, it's a job. <laughs> all right. Moving on. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Moving on. Uh, a little while ago, we were talking about Chris Hardwick and the accusations against him from his ex-girlfriend. And he returned back to The Talking Dead this week or last week because Fear the Walking Dead is back. And he hosts a show after that. He also does one for Better Call Saul. He did one for Breaking Bad. He does one for The Walking Dead. So he, this is kind of like his thing, right? So from what I understand, AMC who he works for, did an internal investigation to see if he was inappropriate with any of the women there. And they concluded that there was no evidence of him behaving inappropriately at their work, mm -hmm. at, in that environment. Mm -hmm. So they let him return. And several female staffers, I believe female, I don't know if there's any other males in there, I could be wrong, uh, quit. Oh, really? Yeah, in protest. Wow, I didn't know that. And he came back and he gave a, uh, oh, here we go. We take these matters very seriously and given the info available to us after a very careful review, including interviews, we believe returning Chris to work is the appropriate step. So they took five weeks to do that and cleared him to return. So that was, oh, that was June that she said that. Okay, so we're at August now. So that was about two months. So I think this is bringing up a, a broader discussion because there's a, a lot of people are concerned that the Me Too movement is going too far. And some men, I mean, maybe rightly so, maybe not rightly so, are nervous about how they're coming off and how they're saying things. They're worried about that they're going to come off like they're mansplaining or being aggressive or something. So there's this weird kind of like I feel like all the men are walking on eggshells it's this big shift and it's going to take time it yeah. really really is because it's it's a really really big cultural shift that's happening right now but do you think he should have gone back do you think he should have quit do you think he well he he returned to work and he gave like a tearful thank you to everybody and thank you to the Walking Dead family and he had co-stars on there that were uh, that were hugging him and you know saying welcome back I'm glad you're here like he's been through a crazy ordeal and there are some men who have been accused who have been I guess I, I almost don't want to say vindicated because I don't think he's vindicated here I don't think this is a vindication this is just he didn't do anything at AMC you know, he may have had this horrible relationship, you know, for, I don't know. But this relationship that he was discussing, like, or that his ex was talking about, that was some pretty crazy stuff. That was, and a bad relationship, you know? So I, I don't, uh, again, another thing where I really don't know how I feel about it. Part of me feels like he maybe should have quit, maybe, and laid low for a little bit. Just out of respect for the movement, part of me thinks if you know that this isn't right and you're innocent of these accusations, you should just like put your foot down and be like, no, I'm going to go back to work. I, I, I don't know where I fall. Where are you? Um, I think that this is... Uh it's, I, I, I know. think, I mean, he, See, like you feel like you got to watch your words, right? No, it's not yeah. that I feel like I got to watch my words. Ah. I'm, I'm just not, I'm just trying I'm to formulate to my, my thought. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's that, like, I, guys, I don't think it's that big a deal that guys had to be a little more careful now. Yeah, okay? yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's such a huge freaking problem. If you mm -hmm. do think it's a huge problem, then where are you coming from? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what angle are you taking on this right, whole right. thing? Like, do you really feel threatened? Like, because mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't feel threatened. You know, like I, yeah, I, yeah. yeah there is like there's like um, uh, a, a kind of like an air of eggshells to some degree. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't think that's the worst outcome here mm. because you can make the argument right. that that women have like permanently been on eggshells mm -hmm. for freaking ever. Yeah. So it's like, if anything, yep. it's just a little bit of parody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not yeah. a big deal. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah. not really that worried about that. As for him in particular, um, I, I think that if the company did the right thing by just keeping Go, it. doing an internal investigation to see like because all they can do is say like look this guy was accused of this thing that he may or may not have done it's a terrible thing but he works for us he's an employee mm. do we fire him for this mm -hmm. 
because of something, something he did in some, his past. Yeah, that's that. It had yeah, nothing to do with our organization. Or that's whatever. never going to be like fully substantiated. That's, yeah, yeah. It's not going to happen. It's yeah. it's hearsay. He it said, is. she said situation. Mm -hmm. And that's do they fire fun, him yeah. over that? And they, they didn't. But what they did say is, we at least make, need to make sure that if he is capable of doing this sort of thing, right. that he didn't do it here. Mm -hmm. So they checked. Yeah. And they've determined that he didn't do it there. Right. So they said. Okay, well, yeah. then you're not fired. Mm -hmm. I don't have a big problem with this. Yeah. I, I don't think that's irresponsible of the company. I think it was responsible of the company to do an investigation. Right. They're not right. going to bring cops in. Mm -hmm. There's no criminal, like, there's no criminal accusation here. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's what makes the whole Me Too movement interesting. It's, it's, it's not about criminal act. Sometimes it's about criminal activity. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of times about criminal activity. Yeah, yeah. And that's really it the stuff be. that we have to be worried be. about. Yeah. But, like, um, I, well, I like, don't know. For for example, like uh, along the same lines, Aziz Ansari. Oh, right? I yeah. read this earlier. Well, yeah. Where he he was accused of coming. Uh, oh, it's been a while. Of coming off a little aggressive on a first date with uh, with a woman that he met briefly. I think they met like once or twice, and then they went out. It kind of went sour. He thought that she was giving him the clear to fool around, and they just weren't like sexually compatible. Yeah. Which happens. Mm -hmm. And she went on her way, and then she started to have regrets about it, and went to him and was kind of like, look, I, I have regrets about last night, I don't like how that went down, and then she kind of, that's how I'm understanding it. But so she kind of made it seem like he harassed her. He made it seem like it was. Or, she made it seem like it was sexual assault. She did. She. I think she said sexual. Okay, I'm assault. trying to remember. If I'm I remember sorry. correctly, I, I hope I'm not wrong about this. I know. That she used the word sexual assault. Wow. In her okay. statement, and that was kind of like reading it. And I remember reading it a couple times. Yeah. And reading other people's digestion of it, and yeah. kind of like getting some opinions. And I'm like, like, was it a bad date? Doesn't sound like of sexual assault. Like she, she never said or, no. It didn't like. It didn't sound like she was even sending signals of a no. Yeah, that's. The she just kind of went along with it the whole time, yeah, I think, and then had regrets oh, later. That's right. You know? She was she was upset that she that he wasn't reading her signals. Like she thought yes. she was putting them out. Yes. So it was like an an, an incompatibility. They're speaking different languages in that way. I mean, yeah. like not literally. They're yeah. speaking different metaphorical languages. Right. At that it point. just yeah. it just didn't match, and she was speaking. giving she was putting out a vibe that. He wasn't picking up on, or something like and that. He was interpreting it something different. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of where it went. And they were wondering if this is going to affect his uh, show on Netflix, Master yeah, of None. Yeah. So a little while ago, um, there was a CEO of Netflix and somebody uh, in an interview, and somebody said, "What about Aziz and Master of None? It was winning all kinds of Emmys, and it's a really good show." And I remember when all this happened, I was like, "Oh gosh, Master of None! I hope that whatever this outcome is." you know, what's going to happen to this show. And they said, whenever Aziz is ready, we're going to be here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they did something similar to Chris Hardwick in that regard. I think it's very different accusations. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, like... Oh, yeah. Like, did like, they conduct an internal yeah. investigation that, you know, but he didn't do I don't even bad think What were they going to investigate? Did you have any other bad dates? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I hate to put it so lightly, but, like, I and make, make so light of it. I know. But that is not even in the stratosphere of, of what, what Hardwick was like. That of. was a whole different thing. Yeah, it was. So I, I have trouble equating the two at all. Mm -hmm. I think they're in... I mean, yeah. other than the fact they're both associated with the Me Too movement, I think it's all they got in common. Yeah. I feel like with... Um, but these are the two that I could think of that are kind of slipping through. Well, Some people have had their careers ruined, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. But these two are kind of scraping their way out a little bit. But here's another thing about it. Almost everybody else who see it, and I remember saying this when this came up, right? And I said mm -hmm. the same thing about Aziz Ansari. Because what we've seen over and over again, uh, at least the, the, what I've been exposed to, is that when somebody's been accused of something like this, mm -hmm. it's... um. At first, it's like, what, what is about this? And yeah, then you yeah. see more people coming forward. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yes. yeah, he did this. Oh, yeah, he did right. this. And it's like, oh, my gosh, this you is a bad a dude. Yeah. Holy crap, we got to get rid of this dude. Mm. And I remember when this came out, and I'm like, I'm going to sit and wait and see. Like, there's going to be more people going to come out and see this because this is some serious stuff. And after some time went by and nobody else did, and it was kind of like, Mm -hmm. Like, really? And then, because yeah. I was just at the severity of it, I'm like, oh man, this had to happen more than once, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, not to say that means he didn't do it. I think there were other female staffers of his that said he was really, like, rough. He's, he's like or a controlling he kind boss. Of like, yeah, you know, like a so I mean, you can, you can make, like, you could speculate about his character like a from there, I guess. Personality or character, but that's yeah. a very different thing. We've all had overbearing right. bosses. Right, right. Um, but, and, oh, and the Aziz Ansari thing, too, was like, um, uh, nobody else came forward and said anything like it. Right. So it was, it's kind of like at that point, the companies are just kind of like, 
if you didn't do anything illegal. Yeah, in and, our company. And especially. and you didn't do it anything even unethical in our company. I know. Unethical or illegal, what are we gonna fire you for? I know. You know, so it's like, and I get it, and that's why I'm not really, I'm less and less worried as time goes on that this whole Me Too movement thing is going to be this completely out of hand, gonna go completely off the rails, cause these huge like shift and like all oh, the men are gonna be like crawling on the ground, their hands and knees, and the yeah. women are gonna be in charge. And like, right, there's so many people that think this is gonna go like the slippery slope fallacy crowd. Yeah, yeah. Is that it's just gonna go crazy. Right. I don't think it's going to. I think it's gonna make men more careful. Mm -hmm. I think more bad men are gonna get caught. Mm -hmm. And then more people are gonna get accused. Yeah. But then people are gonna be a little careful right. about whether or not they jump all over them. Like that's what we're seeing with this. I think a lot right. of people did jump on it, but when the dust settled, they're like, okay, what do we do now, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, are we really gonna, is, is this cause to ruin this guy's life? Mm -hmm. And at least that question is going to be asked. As long as that question is asked, because it's gonna be an individual situation every time. Of course. No two situations are the same. As long as there's that much of a question asked, mm -hmm. it's fine. Yeah. Because then it's, then you, I, you gotta be at least, you know, reasonably confident right. that uh, at the end of the day, the bad guys are gonna get screwed right and the guys that are wrongly accused in some way will be sort of exonerated yeah. and i don't even want to say wrongly accused but maybe like did some stuff that is probably in bad taste like but may unsavory. not be yeah, unsavory See, but I, may not be like a terrible like affront yeah, to humanity you yeah. know like and or and it wasn't intended and the intent yeah, wasn't there like right. there's so much gray area I, here that's exactly nuance, what i was gonna you know? say i feel like there's a lot of gray area it's also treated so like much. there's a lot of nuance of gray area i think we're gonna be fine yeah there, there's gonna be growing pains with it and there's gonna be a lot of you know men who aren't this sure had to what happen, they're though. doing and this yeah yeah it, it really really did because once it and i don't know about um other women out there but when it was really laid out and it was like, has this happened to you at some point? Has, you know, have you dealt with this kind of? And then I'm like, and my first thing is like, oh, no, not really. And then I started going back in my mind and I was like, oh, my gosh, yes, this kind of it has happened. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So and just the fact that I'm so used to it or you just know that that's part of what you deal with as a female is like, oh, my God, that's so it was like a like a light bulb like oh my gosh why do i put up why was i putting up with this for so long and a lot of people have that light bulb go off right yeah, now yeah yeah and, and and as as a man um i definitely had a moment when this whole thing kicked off of like reviewing my what life do? and being like <laughs> have yeah. i done anything yeah, yeah. that could or said something that yeah. could have been interpreted in a way that would make somebody feel like this right or that like i would think somebody else did it be like wow that's some terrible thing and it'd be like oh my god mm -hmm. did i ever say something anything like that and i didn't realize i know and like fortunately i don't think i'm coming up with anything yeah yeah but like it's still like a situation where yeah the dynamic has changed okay i think at some point we're gonna have to get to a, a point where it's like you're gonna have some like uh like 50 or 60 year old guy right that did something when he was 30 or yeah. 20 mm -hmm. before this happened and never did it again because they realized it was wrong right. and then it's, it's some some of us are going to have to be like do we forgive him for it yeah. you know like this is it did he like just respond to the change when in a positive way and, yeah, yeah this is going to be complicated and there's going to really be a lot is. of very interesting uh gray area situations coming up worth discussing it's for scary. sure yeah everybody um, needs to reevaluate but it's their good it's a everybody good reevaluation it's a good kind of upheaval it's a good yeah. kind of uh I don't know, redo in some ways. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's a lot of questions women. surrounding, but women it's, it's need a to good do it thing. Too. Yeah. You know, women need to, to adjust their thinking as well. And, you know, I think everybody just has to really think about what they're saying. Yeah. You know, I know it sounds so, so like rudimentary, yeah. but... But yeah. the underlying foundational purpose of this entire thing is a good thing. Very good thing, yeah. Okay, so just to touch quickly before the end of this episode, Madam Aretha Franklin, Queen Aretha Franklin, Aretha Franklin has died. Yes. And if you are unfamiliar with Aretha, Aretha Franklin... My mom loves Aretha Franklin. Does she really? Yeah, she loves I didn't know that. Oh, I'll have to tell her I'm sorry when I see yeah. her. My mom's really upset, too. Really? But um, if you are unfamiliar with her, I know some of you were younger. She was somewhat before our time. Yes. Uh, she was a soul singer who was who blew up in the 60s, 70s, and then 80s again for a little while. And just this amazing, amazing powerhouse singer. You could hear her in everybody. If you like Adele, Jennifer Hudson, Bruno Mars, everybody. And if you, even if you go to like Luther, yeah, Whitney, the big, strong, powerful yes, soul um, singer. Everywhere. That's her. She's everywhere. That's, that's her. Absolutely. Yeah. And she was really instrumental in the civil rights movement as well. She bailed Angela Hill, I think, out of. Uh, uh, at a jail and uh, 
really, really instrumental with Martin Luther King and, you know, Barack Obama. She sang at the inauguration and everything. So this is kind of like the end of an era for, you know, uh, the civil rights crowd, you know, the original civil rights crowd. And, um, you know, just the music is so great. But I know we're probably going to get a great, like, Grammy tribute this year. I was thinking we'll get a great that. Grammy tribute this problem. We're probably going to get an awesome biography, you know? Yeah, uh, like, yeah, she's got like that. quite she's a story. Quite a story. I know. There's a lot more to learn that we d- haven't really heard yet or mm-hmm. haven't heard enough detail about. Yeah. Which we'll start to probably hear, I think, yeah. at this point. But, like, yeah, this, this is like an icon. So yeah. this, and this she is a big deal. was super, super sassy. She would, like, pull her <laughs> wig off. There's, I think, a gift oh, for her. Yeah. <laughs> and she'd pull her wig off and whip the wig around. And she would, like, kick her, her pianist off the stage and play herself and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, she didn't she take a huge personality. Yeah. Yeah, big personality, yeah. big voice, yeah. I feel badly that she died from pancreatic cancer, which is Oof. incredibly painful. Yeah. Incredibly painful. Not the, a great way to I go. I mean, cancer is horrible as it is, but yeah, pancreatic cancer is awful so i feel badly for that but you know you know it's sad i kind of i saw the news coming in and i was like oh yeah, yeah it was one of those things where it's like man wow well, okay all right even but. so i mean if you're younger and you're unfamiliar pop her in on spotify she bumped out Nicki minaj yeah oh my god she bumped out Nicki minaj that's right so um i don't know how long that's gonna last but you know it's good to give a listen at least to know the history of the music that you're listening to now and you could hear her influence really in everybody so i uh i'm, I'm really sad about that that. That's a shame. All right, guys. So that was last week of stuff. Oh my gosh, we talked so much. We talked so much. It was, was all talking. Even now, that much. I'm topics, very sorry. But, uh, but we just stuff we really wanted to talk about. I know. I know so that's was... really unusual that we don't have a trailer or something yeah. like that. But it's also really unusual for us to just talk too much. Yeah. That's, that's weird. Strange. You are talking about me? I'm talking about both. We oh, ramble. Talk. We both ramble. I talk too much. That can happen. Yay! All right, guys. So if you want to read anything more about what we talked about, links are in the description. Of course. If you like this video, Uh please support us on Patreon. Click like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, bye. bye!